Purdue has won four straight in this building. Officials today, Roger Ayers, Tommy Morrissey, and Nathan Farrell. Matthew Cleveland back in the starting lineup for Florida State. He missed the last two games with back spasms. No Nigel Pack today for Miami. Their starting point guard is out with a lower extremity injury. Florida State enters play on a four-game losing streak. Here's Caleb Mills. Now Cleveland from the baseline. Tough shot. It comes to O'Meara. And here's this Miami offense. Averaging 85 a game during this seven-game win streak. And Isaiah Wong hits the three. The opening chords of the guitar. A niche Florida State. Better be locked in better than that in sequences because Miami's going to come and look to score fast. Mills turns it over. North Chad O'Meara leading the break. Bounce pass. Comes back to O'Meara. Thunder from Miami. Heck of a start from the Canes, allowing that defense to key some high percentage punctuations. Coach Ham needs a timeout to settle him early. Just the ability to get deflections, get hands on balls. And that's North Chad O'Meara, your quote unquote center, running the break. Poplar gets it back and rewards the big fella. Activity, effort, and execution all coming to the forefront early on for the Canes. That's how you start. When you got the opposition calling a timeout in the first minute, you're achieving at a high level. This is a rivalry game, but given the trajectory of both schools, you look at Florida State's record, 8-20, and 6-11 and in conference. They've lost 7-8. of eight. When Jim Laranega took the floor at shoot-around today, High energy. The message was there. This Miami team, they all watched Virginia lose to Boston College earlier in the week. That loss by Virginia meant Miami is in the driver's seat of this conference playing like it off the get-go. Yeah, and it should be too hard to engage your group, although you're playing a lesser team that you've already beaten by 20-plus, but you're playing for a championship. That's why you're seeing a Canes group that's engaged. They want the hardware. They want to be like that 2013 team. Mills almost turned it over. Worley fights for it. And gets the tough basket inside. Still see the ball hawking of the Canes. I mean, ball pressure, trying to get in lanes. They're trying to be active defensively to activate what is an explosive offense. Bensley Joseph getting the start in place of Pack. Now O'Meara coming off a double-double. Joseph shakes Mills, kicks to the corner. Three ball is good. What a popular shooting it at a 40% clip from deep in conference. And then a turnover in the backcourt as well. Just Florida State seems to be sleepwalking early on. Bensley Joseph inserted in a lineup in place of Nigel Pack. Quarterbacks, that thing, is your best perimeter defender. Drive and kick, but an understanding of his connection with the guys. Wong cleaving the Florida State defense. No resistance. Very businesslike in the approach early on. Canes have hit their first four from the field. Florida State already a couple of turnovers. There's Corn, the freshman, backing down in the low post. Too strong. Loose ball and comes to Miami and Joseph. Corn nearly stole it away. Poplar left his feet without knowing where to go. Cardinal Sin with the basketball, but they live to see another day. Wong in consideration for ACC Player of the Year. Finding O'Meara. Offensive rebound. Ball never hit the rim. Shot clock didn't reset. It doesn't matter. Nor Chad O'Meara, who had a double-double in the first meeting between these two. Florida State is being punched in. I mean, every piece of the body right now. A lack of toughness down low. O'Meara doing whatever he wanted there. Corrin lost it out of bounds. Another turnover. And Jordan, this feels like the first game, which was a Miami blowout. Yeah, just shot out of a cannon. And Isaiah Wong capable with the three shoot career highs there at 38% in conference. And he attacks that closeout. Nobody is better with the, the tough twos in the conference than Isaiah Wong. When these two played last month, as you look at what Wong has done against Florida State, four 20 point games, but only one win against the Knowles.
in that first meeting between these two, Miami in the first half scored 54 points. They shot 61% from the field, 9 of 14 from three. And it was the hustle in the first half of that game, 19-0 in terms of second chance points in the first 20 minutes. Hey, this is a group that's capable of scoring 90 points. They've done it, a, what, three times already this season. I mean, they are an explosive group, but it's how they get there. They try to maximize possessions. They get a lot of runouts. They got a lot of efficient guys. A runout like that, the Wilgen Poplar. Florida State ambushed from the get-go. Darren Green launches and hits. They need that from him. Just one of ten from deep in the first meeting. He is a lights-out three-point shooter when he can get going. Yeah, I mean, he's one of the best, and he's hit second most in conference. Florida State's got to take care of the basketball, give their offense a chance to find some sort of rhythm here on the road in this ruckus environment. Joseph, step back on Green. Everything falling for Miami, now seven of nine. Here in the first four minutes plus. A lot of dribbling. Worley, the sophomore, throws it up to the rim, gets his own rebound, and is fouled on the finger roll. The conference's most efficient scoring team. Well, when you get ones like this, an unforced error, Wooga Poplar. Winning the ACC and winning the ACC tournament. They are capable of playing deep into March, maybe even deeper than they did last year. I and mean, they were without Nigel Pack, one of the best scorers in the ACC, and you wouldn't know it with how they've come out of here. Look, they maximize possessions. Their defense keys a lot of what they do on the open floor. They have four guys who average better than 13.5 points per game. But what I've been most impressed with, Anish, today is this a Florida State team Miami blew out of the water by 20 already once this season. It's a 4 p.m. tip. It's not your normal primetime tip-off. But they've been locked in, high energy, engaged, and playing like there's something on the line. And there is a conference championship. It's the best team we're watching in the ACC right now. I'm with you. A team that went to the Elite Eight last year. You've said many times, they're better this year. They're better this year. Personnel, they're better this year. How they're connected, they're better this year. How they score, they're better this year. group has an identity, knows exactly who they are, and they've won seven straight in conference. Conference play is hard to win consistently. They're doing it better than anybody. Joseph dribbled through the entire defense before turning it over. And Jim Laranega, when we spoke to him, really praised his scout team, his young guys, who you don't often see on the court challenging the veterans it's made practices better. Leonard Hamilton on the other end has had to deal with the opposite. They've had so many injuries. They normally have some of the most competitive practices of anybody in the ACC, given how deep they are. Not the case this year with all the injuries. Yeah, and Florida State, without having that depth, uh, that has been the trademark of Coach Ham's success here. I, it, that, that has been a challenge for Florida State. So many injuries early on. They're playing catch-up all season, and it's just been a year that they'd like to put in the rear view. But can they get a little bit more elevated in the effort here? Stand by. And well, Miami, as you see, one of just five power conference teams with an unblemished and undefeated home record. Florida State's got to get back defensively. There's Joseph, no communication. Wide open. That rattles out. Rebound to Worley. But you're not hearing guys talk. I got four. One's coming. They're just quietly getting back in transition. That's a losing effort. Mills slips under Walker and gets the bounce. Caleb Mills coming off a career high last time out, 27, 17 of those points at the free throw line against BC. Here's Omir, down the lane, through the contact, muscles it up and in, no call. That, that's a good matchup for Omir if he could get McLeod to come all the way out there at seven foot four. It allows him to make McLeod a perimeter defender. <laughs> that's, a losing, that's a losing battle. Near the transfer out of Arkansas State. Cleveland to pull up and left it short. Rebound Walker. A 
Lemire again has McLeod on the perimeter. Picked up his bounce. Plenty of time to shoot. Down low, O'Meara blocked at the rim by McLeod. The 7-4 sophomore from Philly. Mills, transition three. No, O'Meara battling for the rebound. And a foul against Florida State. It'll be Miami ball. And I think O'Meara didn't know where he was. Found himself buried underneath the basket. And when he tried to elevate, it was too slow developing for McLeod to recover. And at 7-4, that's an easy shot block opportunity for him. You know how some teams have a type? Pitt has that smaller, thickly built forward. Florida State has a type. They always got a big. Uh, they got a guy like McLeod. Something, yeah. But, you know, they've needed a couple of those guys, typically, is what they've had in years past. That system of, you know, I remember Trent Forrest saying, I'd play 24 minutes a game, and I'd be gassed after those 24 minutes because they all had up. Walker, the highway calls. It's too easy. You got to fortify the paint. That gap was robust. That could have gone in slow motion and Walker had the finish. Green follows his shot and hits. Matthew Cleveland and Harlan Beverly at the scores table. Look at this pacing. Five beyond the arc. Isaiah Wong driving on Bob Miller through traffic, threw it up, followed his miss. New 20, it's taken away by the Knowles. Mills over Joseph, and the rebound. Taken away by Baba Miller after Jordan Miller had it for a moment. Baba Miller, the highly touted freshman from Mallorca, Spain. Stripped away. Miami pushing. Down low, Jordan Miller, who has been a rock of consistency all season for this Miami team. We were talking before the game. He might not be first team all conference, but he does everything well. Yeah, this group is just... The, the active hands and the deflections. I mean, 34 points off turnovers enable them to get that win over a very good Wake Forest team. They do so much of their offensive work like this. You called it. But and these that are, will go back to Florida State. You're looking at long guys. Walker, Miller, uh, even Wong at his size. This team has come out here with a purpose this afternoon. Interesting piece. Let me bring in my expert. Mm, so many scratches. Uh, those are from my car keys. Such a rich history. This won't do well at auction, but at AT&T, it's worth a brand new Samsung Galaxy S23. Wait, really? Mm -hmm. What about this? AT&T's deal is back. Wow. Everyone.
Patel, and here Miami has come out like a house on fire. The sevens are rolling, the aces are coming up. It's been jackpot for the Canes. They made 11 of their first 16 shots. It was 8-0 on points off turnovers. 24-15 for the Canes, it's this simple. Win today, win next Saturday at home against Pitt. Miami's your ACC champion and the one seed in Greensboro. Miami's been feasting inside the painted area. Finally, a first sign of resistance from Florida State, and yet another live ball turnover that leads to a hoof on the other side for Jordan Miller. For those of you just tuning in here on ESPN2 that saw Alabama beat Arkansas, that's three, by my count, breakaway dunks for Miami. Yeah, Florida State is just gifting what is the most efficient scoring team in the ACC, run out after run out. Meanwhile, Darren Green hits the three, his second triple. Florida State cuts it to eight, 26-18. Second meeting of the season between these two teams. Last month in Tallahassee, Miami scored 54 points in the first half. Lights out, they ended up winning by 23. Jordan Miller from the outside, way off. And the rebound to Florida State and Deontay Green. At this point, if I'm Miami, I'm not taking anything beyond the arc. Obviously capable there, but they are owning the inside. Meanwhile, Bob Miller has sixth three on his 19th attempt. And Florida State, here in the last couple of minutes, has closed this deficit all the way to five. Miami's largest lead was a dozen. That's 6'11", Baba Miller, and that's why the NBA scouts are out here to watch him. An alluring prospect, very high ceiling. Marlon Beverly lines up a three, doesn't go, and the rebound to Green. And with this smallish Miami lineup, I'm making Baba Miller work outside to defend. Fatigue will play a factor, and just not comfortable necessarily moving through screens and guarding as a perimeter defender. Chandler Jackson driving through traffic comes to Wooga Poplar. Miami at home this season, a perfect 15-0. Anthony Walker off the nice feed. <laughs> Nearly another live ball turnover. Miami's trying to get in those passing lanes and for good reason with the success they've had. Foul is called. Five steals already for Miami in the first half. They average seven a game in conference. They thought that was a clean pick of the pocket from Beverly. Look, if I'm Florida State, on the catch, strong with the basketball, if I don't have anything, move it, move it, move it, and then try and explore a gap opportunity. Matthew Cleveland. He's got two fouls for Florida State. He was coming back on the court, now heads to the bench. His first game back after missing the last two with back spasms. A notable absence for Miami, Nigel Pack, their starting point guard. In this Miami seven game win streak, Pack had been playing his best ball as a hurricane. 18 points per game, 45% from three, so Bensley Joseph got the start at point guard for Miami. Really, those last four games since the Louisville win, I mean, he has taken off on a rocket ship, being efficient, going for 20-plus night after night. You pair that with Isaiah Wong, and good luck with the other weapons on this team and stopping. Meanwhile, Florida State has clawed back as Jalen Worley brings the deficit back to within five. We get a Christian Watson sighting, freshman wearing three for Miami. Just his 10th game of the season. Miller inside, the basket counts. Jordan Miller is so good. He is one of the most undervalued players, not just in this conference, in college basketball. He can do so much, can also put it on a deck, spin to win through traffic, and one opportunity on the other side. Coral Gables, third sellout this month for Miami. Anticipation growing and building around this program at Ishraf. Jordan Cornette, the way this game started, boy, Miami looked like a team playing for an ACC championship. To Florida State's credit, they battled back after an awful start. Florida State was just gifting the basketball to Miami, and Miami was taking that thing with runouts going the other way, getting easy ones. 
Florida State, minus one miscue, has settled into taking care of the basketball. They've moved it a little bit. Darren Green has got a couple of those looks from three, and the sharpshooters provided for them. And they've had a little bit more resistance defending in the paint, which has brought them back. Can they maintain that? Stand by. Worley to Mills off the shot fake. Working on Isaiah Wong. Didn't get much on the shot. He wanted a foul. Now Mills no can't worry about that. He's got to get back defensively and guard. Omir drops it off to Beverly for the easy two. There's no sense of urgency again in that sequence. When Florida State had started to do a better job, they resorted back to lagging on their way back. Miami's going to beat him down the floor if that's the case. Green from the baseline. And Miller there for the rebound. He does everything. Da Vinci and high tops for Miami. The lob to Omir offline. And Omir able to track it down. Nor Chad Omir, the first Nicaraguan to earn a Division I basketball scholarship. Miller, the turnaround, using the height advantage on House. Miami plays with great space. So usually on those plays for Miller, that's isolation. Just couldn't win the one-on-one. -on -one. Green sets and misfires. Watch, Miami's going to go. Oh, they're actually going to sit, sit on this one. When it's been a half-court game, Florida State has found success. It's just the challenge of making it that half-court game. Some bad misses have keyed some now as well for the Canes in their opportunities to run. Omir, the fade. It's not what you want. Not when it's coming as easily as it has for Miami. That's, that's settlement of the highest order. Hats launches. Rebound, Omir. Now Wong. And that's a kickball. It stays with Miami. That, in many ways, a break for Florida State, a bad shot, the same as a turnover. We see it all the time. Absolutely, and the, and the thing about Miami personnel, five guys that could all change ends. They're five high-level athletes. Or Chad O'Meara is 6'7", but he moves like he's 6'2", up and down the floor. So personnel on the other side with Florida State needs to understand when that thing goes, it's a sprint to get back and protect. Bentley Joseph making his second start of the season today. Now it's Wong. Nearly lost it, defended by Mills. Shot clock down to three. Beverly launches and connects. It's a good defensive effort. I mean, Wortley at 6'6", out of hand in the face of Beverly. You'll live with those mates. There's Baba Miller, tipped up by McLeod. Into the embrace of Omir. The other way, Joseph running ahead of the pack, plus one. How about the outlet? Omir on the rebound. The vision before the catch, he almost knew, I've got a leak out opportunity. And he gets it out to Bensley Joseph. Look, his eyes were up right away. That is an elite outlet pass to key the finish for Joseph in the open lane. Underrated part of Omir's game, his that's, passing. I mean, that's huge. As bigs, you're taught rebound and basketball. The really good ones are going to rebound and get greedy. It's like a DN coming off the edge. It's one thing to get the sack. It's another thing to get your hand on that football. And that was a rebound that became a scoring opportunity because Omir said, no, I'm going to do one more pass the job, get that thing out for some, for some baskets. So Florida State cut it to five, and then Miami has responded with an 11-0 run. Fast break points, the story of the game. Now, Bob and Miller, it's not really part of his game to play back to the basket, despite his 6'11 size advantage. That's where you'd like to see his game grow to really create that matchup nightmare that he can be. At 6'11, he's going to get his shot off, but he needs to be able to take those guys, especially a smallish Canes lineup down low, and punish them. And that's just quite not in the bag yet for the youngster with a high seal. Florida State hoping he comes back next year. NBA scouts tantalized by his potential. Miller beats the shot clock, but it's an air ball, so it is a shot clock violation. This has been a tough season for Florida State. They've had injuries, missing pieces, and they lost guys in the offseason who they thought were coming back. But Leonard Hamilton will go into the transfer portal to supplement the guys that are here. And if the players who we think should come back, come back, 
Florida State should get back to being what we're accustomed to seeing next season. I think Coach Ham surveyed the landscape of what this ecosystem of college basketball is right now and said, okay, this is the adjustment we need to make, and he's going to go ahead and make it next season, and they'll be relevant once more. Look, they, they were dealt a, a tough deal with injuries and personnel, and the way they like to play, they want to press you, shorten the shot clock, challenge you to take the tough ones with the clock being shortened, and, and play really hard in spurts, play 10 guys and overwhelm you. That has not been the system they've been able to play this year, and they've been exposed. They come into this game having lost four in a row, seven of eight, and the only win in that span against Louisville, who sits near the bottom of the ACC, and O'Meara, now he's just rubbing it in, knocking down a three-pointer. Just the sixth three of his career, the fifth of the season. This was a game a few minutes ago. That's the ability to score in bunches that Miami presents. It has really opened this quickly. thing up. And there's Green putting an end to a 14-0 Miami run. Offense seems to be so effortless for Miami at times. I mean, they, just, they have so many guys. So many guys that can do so many different things. I mean, every guy that can score at multiple levels. Joseph for three. Front rim. Green tracks down the loose ball. Chandler Jackson ran into resistance. Now it's Mills. His three not there. Joseph amongst the trees. I mean, Mills is a sub-30% three-point shooter. You, that's what you want him to do. Poplar the up and under. No call. Let's see if Florida State pushes. Poplar gets back. Green, near turnover. Wong went for the steal. Rushed the shot. Joseph the outlet the other way. Poplar the two-handed flush. That sums up the entire first half. Look, when that shot goes up, you now have a couple of these Miami guys that are just leaking out. Florida State's not an elite rebounding team, not the ones we're used to. And they're being opportunistic. Florida State's not adjusting, getting back. Poplar knocks it away. It's Walker on the breakout. Throwdown City. An 18-2 run for and he's sitting here with me. I've been high on this Miami team all season long. Uh, um, just with the personnel they have, the bench, the contributions, buying the roles from guys whose minutes have, have dwindled from year to year. Uh, this group is connected on all fronts. Best team in the ACC and can get to a Final Four. That kind of good. Yeah, it's funny. I thought the ACC was down and nobody was good as Green misses a three. And say what you want about the opponent. Florida State has not had a great season. This Miami team, even the games they have lost, with the exception of that Maryland game in non-conference, they have been in every game. They're perfect at home. And as Tom Korean said, they beat you in so many different ways. Yeah, and he makes a good point. When you bring in a guy like Poplar, that's just another weapon for this group offensively. How about Bensley Joseph, who's offering one up there for three and gets it to go? He's your best perimeter defender. He's a facilitator, and he's also a very capable scorer. There's an embarrassment of riches. Now, the vulnerability with this group would be their ability to defensive rebound. But again, their style of play can still combat that inability at times because they do other things so exceptionally well. Like, like take that. the basketball away. Miller with Miller trailing. And the foul on Baba Miller. Jordan Miller down near the camera, folks. I'll tell you, I, I can't say this enough. If I'm drafting a team in the ACC, there's a lot of stars you're going to grab first. I, I get it. You got you got Burton. You've got Wong. You've got Turquavion. You've got Jarkel Joyner. list goes on and on. Early on in my picks, give me Jordan Miller because this guy does a whole lot of a whole lot for your team. And any gaps uh, of vulnerabilities with the squad, he covers up a lot of those. I love this young man's game. He doesn't just cook the meals. He buys the groceries, puts the recipe together. He cleans up after. Hey, Sounds like of, me as a husband in a Cornette house. Yeah, stop lying. Virginia, wow. North Carolina, <laughs> 6 p.m. Eastern today. UNC barely survived against Notre Dame. 
this is a must win for a UNC team without a quad one win. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the definite quad one in front of them. Duke could present them as another one, but Carolina, in the, in, in, with the challenging circumstance in front of them, much like me broadcasting here with you as you take shots at me, they have to deliver. They have to today. You knew you were going to catch a couple of strays. <laughs> Chandler Jackson knocks down the three. That's the freshman from Memphis. Career high 10 points. Last time out, that was a week ago against BC. 50 to 28. Miami in the two games against Florida State has scored at least 50 points in the first half both times. I, I, just think about this stat. You're at 50 right now, and you're shooting 64% from the field, 56 from three. It's because of the shots they've been afforded in this game, and they've earned them, no question. But these are runouts, these are layups, these are open three point looks. I, those are uncanny numbers. 10 points for Jordan Miller, who's now scored in double figures in 23 straight. This was much like, look, the Wake Forest game. You score 96, you shoot 60% from the field. Jackson with another three. And you go back to that first game in Tallahassee. You didn't think Miami would be able to top that first half. In the first 20 minutes last month in tally, 54 points, 61% from the field. Today, 52 points, 65% from the Sheesh. field. Still 18 seconds to go. Huh. A 21-point lead for Miami, and to be frank, this was not close for very long. Miami got off to a great start. Florida State at one point got to within five, and then Miami exploded on a big run, and that's been the story of this first half. It just never has felt like the Knolls have really been in this game. Yeah, you just got to get to the half, and at the half, you got to pull the fire alarm or something. <laughs> Is this a game where, as a coach, you're thinking, do I get tossed in the second half? <laughs> coach Ham's not that kind of guy. Look, it, this is the tale of two seasons. Florida State's not that group right now, and Miami's one of the best teams in the nation. And that at the end of the season, and this is what you get. A first half by number 13, Miami. 54 points in the first half for the second time this season against Florida State. The Canes over the final 7-4. Four points on 66% shooting. Florida State has to adjust. They got to take care of the basketball. They got to get back. They got to try to develop somewhat of a rhythm by allowing themselves multiple possessions consistently without giveaways. And you brought up a great point in the first half. They got to talk more. Yeah, I mean, you can tell it's a group that's done a lot of losing this year, and it's worn on them, but you still got to go out there and play with some pride here in the second half. Now, Miller. On the backdoor cut, he leads all scores. 15 assists on 24 field goals for Miami Crane. Miami is a team playing with hunger. They've been making the extra pass. Foul. Jalen Worley. Sorry. Tough move from Worley. Got Joseph, their best perimeter defender, on his hip. Played through the contact. Got there before Wong and help side could get there to potentially alter the shot in attack mode. Good to see from Worley in that sequence. Florida State today getting Matthew Cleveland back after missing two games with a back injury. He's the team's leading scorer. Caleb Mills has a wrap around his right leg. He was getting that iced up during shoot around. He's to McGovern. And what was Corrin does here on the pick and roll defense. Shows, doesn't need to recover to Walker. Good contest, and Florida State rebounds. Good sequence defensively from the Knowles. Cleveland backs up with Miller pressing. Worley thought about the three, hesitated, nearly traveled. He did travel. <laughs> he got away with that one. And Cleveland cashes in. That is eight straight baskets for Florida State. It is a 13-1 run and then back into this game. The freshman Corrin has, has done a fantastic job of just playing his role, running the floor, hanging around, loitering around that rim, and good things have happened. Florida State's generated a couple turnovers, which has got them playing fast and not having to operate in the half court. And because of that, 
they're back in this ball game. Miami kind of took a step back defensively, hasn't been doing what has been necessary to protect this lead, and here comes Florida State. All inside the arc. Eight of nine is Florida State in the second half. Zero three-point shot attempts. And zero turnovers, which was an issue in the first half. Wong forced it over Baba Miller, didn't hit anything. And Florida State with a three can get to within single digits. And this is good for Florida State. They need to play at a faster pace because in a half court, they just don't have the personnel to be dangerous. There. UNC big game for both teams later today. All those teams you see with the double bye are second weekend teams in the NCAA tournament and beyond. For all the talk about the conference being down, look at those teams that are already slated for the quarterfinals represent the conference. Sure, you don't see UNC and you don't see Duke, but you still see dangerous teams in this conference. And all the crap that they take right now, let's wait and see what happens come March because it always seems to me walking back some of that narrative once we enter the Madness. Clemson, another one, a team that led the ACC for a lot of the year. The Tigers not in Joe Lenardi's projected field. They got a big win in a big way against NC State earlier in the day. Joseph down the lane. Florida State imposing its height. Now it's Poplar. Doesn't get the roll, but a foul against Florida State as Jordan Miller went for the rebound. It's going to be against Green. Jordan Miller, arguably their best offensive rebounder, does a good job of getting in there, boxing out on offense to try and get that rebound, and that speaks to his acumen and his ability. Again, Jordan Miller, a guy who checks a lot of boxes for the Canes. Miami has led by as many as 25 in this game. Florida State in the midst of a 13-1 run. Jordan Miller threw three defenders. 16 for the redshirt senior. Just feel. Always seems to take the right shot or make the right play. Understanding to take what the defense gives him and attacks the gap. Here's Cleveland. Now Darren Green, one of the best three-point shooters in the league. Jackson, the freshman. Deontay Green was calling for it. Cleveland, so good from the mid-range. Yeah, big-time shot. I mean, they had Green as the dive guy all alone because of the hard show on the pick and roll. They're still able to find good offense. Florida State starting to come alive and discover that rhythm in half court. Omir ran into an ambush, kicks it to the corner, turned over. Another place Florida State's been better, protecting that paint. They've converged on a basketball, but the unforced error prevents them from cutting into the depth. You know, Mac, Matthew Cleveland is a versatile guy that can only get better. And consistently, him playing with that catch coming off curl screens mid-range, that's a sweet spot. He can be deadly there. 11 points for Cleveland, 9 in the second half. Wong over Baba Miller. Now, those are the long arms of Baba Miller. And that 6'11 frame impacting the shot. Wong thought he created space, but it's 6'11 with that reach. There's no such thing. And the lay-in by Jackson at the other end. Miami's now been the team that struggled to get back and defend in transition. And Florida State taking a page from the Canes' first half book. A 17-3 run. Florida State has outscored Miami 22-9 since halftime. And the Knolls are 10 out of 12 from the field here in the second half. Joseph falling away. And that's what, what Joseph elected to do is what Wong should have. Create that space, but then with that second offensive effort, drive it, make Miller defend you. Cleveland draws the contact, and will get two free throws, the foul on Anthony Walker. Florida State coming alive, starting to play fast, and it's helped key their offense a little bit. Fill the lanes, get downhill. Florida State not giving up. North Carolina right now one of Joe Lenardi's first four out. You beat a Virginia team with its net ranking being what it is. That puts you in Joe Lenardi's projected field. Yeah, it's, it's got to be for a group that struggles to shoot it like Carolina has beyond the arc. And I wonder if the health of R.J. Davis, that, that finger, uh, he's been less efficient. They've got to find ways to speed it up 
try and play through Baycott despite the fact when you're not making shots, they pack in that paint. Find ways to be effective inside the arc, and it's a challenge because they run good stuff, but it settles in on shooters who just simply haven't been knocking them down this year, and that's been challenging for them to stack wins or win it all consistently here down the stretch. Meanwhile, Virginia struggled of late as Wong releases and hits. Virginia had a scare at Louisville. They were pushed to the brink by Notre Dame and then ambushed earlier this week by BC. Yeah, Virginia's very reliant on a three-point shot. They've kind of uh, become an inefficient shooting team there. They've needed more from Beekman as Florida State again gets one downhill. 11 of 13 are the Knowles in the second half. Virginia doesn't have the defense we're accustomed to seeing there. There are some holes in the Virginia group, but yet still, they're a dangerous team because Coach Bennett is Coach Bennett. Kihei Clark is that point guard. Just seems to make so many things right. Here comes Beverly. Denied at the rim. Chase for the loose ball, and they will tag Beverly with his second foul. Florida State continues to do a good job protecting their goal, converging on the basketball, a lot of guys challenging, multiple efforts there. Florida State's taking care of the basketball. Only one turnover here through the first half of the second half, whereas they gave it away 11 times in the first 20 minutes. Cleveland thought about the three instead, puts it on the floor, maneuvers past Walker, and Florida State is within single digits, 68 to 59. Hard screen set on Walker, lack of communication. Bumps him off the play, allows Cleveland that clean look. This is the closest it's been since the 7.30 mark of the first half. I mean, defensively, Miami's just not done what's necessary or what's up to standard for this group. Giving up 60 points nearly here with 10 minutes left to play. In the second half, Florida State 12 of 14 and incredible. Now deploying the full court press. I've not taken a three here in the second half. I'm just trying to attack, be the tougher team. For 10 minutes here, they have been. 16 points for Jordan Miller to lead all scores. He's one of four canes in double figures. Cleveland has 15 for Florida State, one of three Knowles in double figures. Shot clock down to five. Joseph lets it fly. It rims out. And a rebound by Cleveland. Mills puts it on the floor to the rim. It's good. That's just too easy. Harlan Beverly not in a proper stance. And the first step allows the blow by and get to the rim. And we see that time and time again here in the second half. 68-61, the answer from Joseph not there. Cleveland rips it away. On the break against O'Meara, no whistle. A lot of contact there. Cleveland did what he was supposed to, take it at the chin of O'Meara. And Leonard Hamilton can't believe no foul was called. Beverly has the open three. He'll set, fire, rebound to Worley. Keep pushing it for Florida State. Keep attacking. Cleveland transition Don't three. Like it. Don't like it. Not with what's been working for Florida State. That is giving Miami what they want. They want them to settle for that. Miami's not been able to stop the drive from Florida State. You can't abandon that if you're the Knowles current. Wong lost it. There's Worley. Two on two against Beverly. The layup good and Florida State has made this a two-possession game. Keep attacking. Florida State now believes, and for good reason, a two-possession game. Coach Laranaga's going to play through. Get to the under eight. That's the trust Jim Laranaga has in his team. Miami turns it over again. Green pushing. Mills calling for it. Worley, wide open jumper. Front rim. Rebound to Jordan Miller. This is a veteran Miami group. Jim Laranega trusts his guys to figure it out on the fly, almost like an NBA coach. Yeah, got to take care of the basketball. A few giveaways here really hurt them. Joseph starting today with Nigel Pack out. Omir stripped by Worley. Here's Green. Pull up three. 
It's good! And wow. Florida State, down by as many as 25, has cut it to two. Wow! Defensively locked in. Refused to give up anything on that end. And it's allowed them to speed up and play with a pace that has been advantageous to the Knowles. And here they are on the doorstep. Omir, Worley, give me that. Getting out on the run. Boom from three. Green, dead eyes in. We got a ball game in Gables. With one of the best savings rates in America, banking with capital... I'll tell you what, guys, <laughs> Miami had a 23-point halftime lead. And then the Cuban coffee hit for Florida State. The Knowles, 15 out of 20 from the field in the second half. They have cut this to a two-point game. 18-0, fast breaks. Miami had 18 points in that first half, Florida State zero. Florida State's flipped the script. 12 fast break points in the second half to Miami zero. Taylor falling away. Offensive rebound, put back, and the foul, Norchad O'Meara. Norchad O'Meara taking milk money on that sequence. Jordan Miller does a quick one from about 15 feet. Just the, the rip through to get that inside position and advantage for Norchad O'Meara and a put back. Second foul on Corrin. O'Meara today, 13 points, seven rebounds. Missed the free throw, but Miller tracks down the carry. And this has plagued Florida State, too, in there losing. The inability to defensive rebound. Unacceptable off a of free throw blockout. Right, Jim Laranega calls a timeout to salvage the possession. We'll take a break, too. 70 to 66. All of a sudden, we have a ball game at Coral Gables. Switch. Station of College Basketball brought to you by Wendy's. Two for six dollars, the best deal in fast food. And that last time out by Miami came from the court, not the sideline. It was Jordan Miller who called it, not Jim Laranega. So Miami right now is out of timeouts with 6.49 to go. We know Jim Laranega likes to trust his team. And in big spots, he'll let them play through some lulls. But if this game stays close and you get into the end game, boy, that could come back to haunt Miami. Yeah, in a tight game like that, you want to have the ability, whether there's some turbulence or just, you know, some confusion. You want to have one of those timeouts. Miller uh, jump, jumped it early there. He didn't need to call that timeout. It wasn't uh, heavy pressure. He could have passed out of that played on with 14 seconds on the shot clock. So regrettable decision, but Miami has a chance to get their puppies in a row and get a good one here and try and build what has become a very narrow narrow lead. Miami's largest lead was 25. Florida State has never led. Poplar of the corner three. Not there. Chandler Jackson with the board. Florida State pushing. Late commitment to the basketball there from Wong, but luckily a retreat dribble from Florida State, who I thought had an advantage at the rim once again. Mills, oh. his pass knocked down. Corin saves it. Green, a three. Fouled on the three-point shot by Joseph. It feels like Florida State is playing to win this game, and Miami's currently playing to not mess up. There's a tentativeness that has become obvious sitting courtside here from Miami in their body language and how they're moving, whereas Florida State has just been the aggressor. Absolutely got up under the shooter's face. There was contact. Bad decision there from Joseph. Green an 89% free throw shooter. And Florida State with a chance to close to within one. Joseph asking what he did. You gotta let the shooter lay it. Remember with Virginia's loss to Boston College on Wednesday, Miami is now the team in the driver's seat for the one seat of the ACC tournament. All the Canes have to do Win today, beat Pitt at home next Saturday. Miami's the one seed. 
pressure bust pipes. I mean, it, this is the madness starts in February. I try to tell everybody this. It's not March. It comes right about now when you start trying to secure regular season championships and seeding. Miller swiveling inside, and Florida State with a chance to take the lead. Mills driving inside, and the Knolls lead for the first time today. How about it? Perimeter defense has failed the Kings. Florida State can get to the rim whenever, however, whatever. Here comes Joseph. On the back door, Poplar is fouled on the way up. It's just too easy for Florida State. Kayla Mills gets Jordan Miller, who's one of their better defenders, but he got him on that hip, and Jordan Miller gave up on the play. Had an angle, I thought, to maybe alter that shot, but pulled up, and Mills finished it through. Florida State is doing every single thing inside the arc. Only taking two threes, one of two from three, but the points in the paint, they have 36 of them, and all of them, I feel like, have come here in the second half. It's wild. This Florida State team entered the game on a four-game losing streak. They had lost seven of eight, the only win in that stretch against Louisville. Miami, meanwhile, one of five power conference teams that began the day undefeated at home. Mm. <laughs> I'll tell you what, me and you show up, man. The wackiness ensues. Mills driving on one, the up and under. And Florida State back up by one. Wong going right back at Mills, turns it over. Green accelerates, wild shot. Joseph tracks it. Miami has not had anything in transition in the second half. Green should have played off two, was just moving entirely too fast. Had a great look driving it at the rim, and it's been layups all day. Joseph, dribble drive in the paint, throws it up, and he'll shoot two. Caleb Mills has just been able to, I mean, challenge here in these last few sequences, these Miami guards, and just get to the rim. A little bit of a hesitation to stand up the defender in Isaiah Wong to create the gap and advantage in the driving lane. And then he finished. I'd like to see Caleb, Caleb Mills with the ball in his hands a little bit more here down the stretch because his ability to get to the rim. Miami shot 65% in the opening half. Just 7 of 21 from the field here in the second half. Meanwhile, Florida State 17 of 23 from the field since halftime. Warren over Poplar. The basket counts plus the foul and a chance for a three-point play for the Florida State freshman. You talk about being the more physical team that's been in control. 30 second half points in the paint for the Seminoles. Warren began this thing, if you remember, in the second half with the rim runs as the dive guy scored around a basket. And here he is again with Florida State adding on to their narrow lead. The free throw no good. Now the joke here at halftime was, what are we going to talk about in the second half? A ball game. Yeah. Joseph tied up. Jump ball, possession arrow, Florida State. And again, it goes back to the tentativeness. It, it, Joseph was on his heels. You got the defense up. Jackson's looking here to guard. I mean, excuse me, that was, that was Joseph with the handle. He, he's just not ready for what's coming his way. Florida State's applying pressure. They're trying to go take this game right now. Miami is allowing a whole heck of a lot. Florida State has won four in a row on Miami's home floor. Much corner is the dive guy. Cleveland against O'Meara. Hit the side of the backboard. 
Wong will retreat. Amir needs to get down on a block and, and try and make some plays through the post as well. Miller against Corin. Got the freshman in the air and gets the two. Miller so good in space. Knew that he had the open lane and ability to operate and converts. Miami by one. Mills the other way. Wild layup. And a blocking foul is called against the Canes. Three forty-two to go in regulation, and it's a ball game. Caleb Mills at the free throw line after Bensley Joseph just picked up his fourth foul. Joseph remains on the floor. And Mill is an excellent free throw shooter, 84%. Ties the game at 76. No Nigel Pack for Miami today. So if Joseph were to foul out, you're probably looking at Isaiah Wong, maybe even Harlan Beverly playing some point. And, and obviously, no Nigel Pack. Didn't think it would matter to this degree, but clearly in moments like this, his ability to produce baskets and be add just that other thread is sorely missed currently. A one-point lead for Florida State. They have trailed by as many as 25. Miller puts it on the floor, kicks it out. Poplar from deep. Battle for the rebound, won by Mills. I'm Mills. I, I want to see if Wong or Miller, who's ever got me, can keep me in front. Mills. Got Miller in the air, draws the contact. Love He's it. so good at getting to the free throw line. Last time out, he went to the line 21 times in a win against BC, or a loss against BC. And I called for it coming across the timeline, not because I'm smart. Let's be very clear, I'm not. But Caleb Mills has had great success attacking his defense, and there's been nobody that's been able to provide that resistance for him not to believe he can't get where he wants on the floor. First one, no good. Isaiah Wong's family in attendance. Wondering what probably a lot of the building here are wondering at the Watsco Center is, is this Isaiah Wong time as we get to the last three minutes? We've seen it so many times over the last few seasons here. A confident performer wants the ball in his hands. Isaiah Wong in his career, one and six against Florida State all time against Cleveland. Great Picked up his dribble. Cleveland. Cleveland gave up nothing there. Shot clock at six. Now it's Miller. A lot of dribbling. Miller lost it. Cleveland ahead of the pack. Trout. Throws it down. Got away with a lot of steps. But a great finish. This Florida State team, the active hands and what they've been able to do here defensively. Multiple efforts guarding in isolation. Turning the water off on the Kings. The four-point lead, the largest for Florida State, but Wong gets the crowd to its feet. You got to get stops. Perimeter defense has to elevate themselves here if they want to extend this home winning streak. Mills trapped. Kicks to Green, the three. No, Cleveland, offensive rebound, new 20. Green again, grazes the rim. They rushed the shot when they didn't have to. And the Florida State bench in disbelief. That's a regrettable decision from Green. First one, fine. You're one of the best shooters in the conference. Second one, force, run some clock, get a good one. Crowd still standing. Wong over Cleveland. Off the side of the backboard. And it comes to Corin. Less than 90 seconds to go. Florida State on the verge of an improbable comeback. I go four flat or a high ball screen, but let Mills determine if he can once again get past Wong. Corn set the screen. Mills kicks to the corner. Green. No good. Rebound to Miami. It's the shot you want. It's good execution from the Knowles. Just couldn't convert. And remember, Miami's out of timeouts. They burned their last timeout with seven minutes and change to go in this half. Miller posting up Worley. Miller with the left hand. Oh, me! 
clear the follow. Miami by one. Timeout, Leonard Hamilton. 33.6 left. A game that was on the verge of a blowout comes down to the wire. Florida State struggles to defensive rebound. This one costly. There haven't been a ton of second chance, but the eighth one for Miami, their biggest of this ball game. A lot of tense fans here hoping the Canes can get to 16-0 and remain perfect at home. What's on the line, Anish? A whole lot of achievement to this point from the Canes and their rival Florida State hoping to play the role of disruptor. For Miami, they've won seven in a row. They have not lost at home. Right now, it's Miami that is in the driver's seat in the ACC. If they win out, which means a win today and a win at Pitt next week, they're the one seed in the ACC tournament. But a loss here impacts you not just in the ACC, but it also impacts your seed line. Miami right now, a number four seed according to Joe Lenardi. You lose to Florida State, it impacts seeding as well. So a lot at stake for Miami and credit Florida State for not giving up when this game looked to be over. Now let me tell you something else, Anish, worth noting. If you're a Miami Hurricanes fan, you don't want this game to go to overtime. Why? Florida because State Florida doesn't State lose. Florida State is 13 and 0 in overtime games, which is an active NCAA record. They do not lose in overtime. And I remember Leonard Hamilton earlier this year telling us why that was. They had won 13 straight in OT because generally they're always the deeper team and they always have the pressure leg. That's not necessarily the case this year. Now here, I said I like the green three that was the miss, it was the right shot. It's gotta be Caleb Mills to make a play here. Wong has not shown the ability to stop him. Mills has to get to the painted area and try to make a play here. 10 second differential between game clock and shot clock. Mills got his man in the air, throws it up off the window and in. Florida State by one. They haven't stopped it. Final 20 seconds. Miami out of timeouts. Juan puts it on the floor in the painted area. Kicks it out. And we get a whistle. It'll be a foul against Florida State. Now they had a foul to give. But I don't like the 16th foul. I said Mills, challenge Wong. Wong hadn't stopped him getting in that painted area in the second half. That's exactly what they do. On the other side, Florida State had three defenders in place. Corn uh, didn't need a foul there. You had him right where you wanted him. Inside to Omir, blocked. Comes back to Joseph, 10 seconds. On the drive, out of bounds. And it will stay with Miami, 8.1 seconds to go. The entire building on its feet, Poplar to inbound. Miller for three, for the lead, got it! Final chance, Florida State, Worley, Cleveland for the win, it's good! Matthew Cleveland stuns Miami! Officials at the